Hello, and welcome to this film, which is all about electrochemical cells, um, which could be viewed as uh, kind of chemical reactions, redox reactions, in which we've actually taken the reduction and oxidation processes and physically separated them from one another. Hopefully by the end of this film you all know the meaning of some key terms that we use when we're talking about electrochemical cells and you'll be able to go back to your data sheet and use that list of reduction potentials that you've got to predict the overall voltage of an electrochemical cell and the charge of the electrodes in that cell as well as the direction in which electrons and ions are flowing through the cell. Now, you might be thinking, I've got no idea what an electrochemical cell is. The chances are you've used thousands of them in your life before, and you've actually seen one of them um, in this series of films before, although it wasn't really presented as an electrochemical cell before. You might remember that when we were talking about standard reduction potentials and how you measure them, we were talking about the fact that you connect um, a half cell, so perhaps a metal dipped into a solution of metal ions, you connect it to a standard hydrogen electrode to measure the difference between the two potentials. And you add something called a salt bridge and now you've basically got a circuit. Okay, And because you generate a voltage, this is acting like a battery, or um, it's strictly speaking a battery is a collection of cells, Okay, so this is something which generates a current for us. And you have actually seen one before, even though it wasn't introduced as such. Now, when we're looking at electrochemical cells, we use a number of different key terms. It's not so important that you can actually define these in a test or in an exam, but it is important that you have some understanding of what they refer to, because quite often you're asked to label these things. Okay, now if I look at an overall, this is a diagram of an electrochemical cell. Okay and it's got a voltmeter added to it. In this electrochemical cell, I've got two electrodes. Now, the electrodes, they're the conductors in each of the two half cells, okay? So, often this will be the strip of metal dipped into the solution of the metal ions, but sometimes, if you're using a gas ion equilibrium, like the standard elect hydrogen electrode, for example, the conductor could be made of something that isn't actually in the equilibrium. So in the standard hydrogen electrode we use a platinum electrode and the equilibrium between hydrogen and hydrogen ions takes place around that electrode. But quite often the electrode will just be the strip of metal that is involved in the equilibrium that you're interested in. Now, as I say, defining what an anode and cathode are is not all that important, but it is important to remember that oxidation always takes place at the anode and reduction always takes place at the cathode. RAC is one way of remembering this, that reduction is at the cathode. Okay. Um, so, as I say, the important thing about anode and cathode is that you can determine which one is going to be which by looking at where reduction and oxidation are taking place. Okay. The salt bridge, the salt bridge is something we add to our two half cells to allow electricity to flow between them in the form of ions. So this is an ionic substance, or it's a, it contains an ionic substance, which allows a current to flow between the two half cells, but not in the form of electrons, okay? And we deliberately choose something that is made of ions that don't form precipitates, okay? Because we don't want the ions in the salt bridge to start forming precipitates with the ions in the solutions, because that will alter the concentrations of the ions in the solution, and it will alter the, alter the position of the equilibria, which will in turn alter the cell potentials, or the half cell potentials. Okay, So we often use something like ammonium nitrate, or potassium nitrate, or some combination of ions that don't form precipitates. Okay, If you look up on your data sheet, all nitrates are soluble, so are all ammonium compounds, so are all potassium compounds, sodium compounds. Okay, so we use something, an ionic, electro, an electrolyte that will conduct electricity in the form of flow of ions. Okay, so this provides an, basically an electrical connection between the two half cells, but doesn't allow electrons to flow. It allows ions to flow. The electrodes, as we've discussed, they're the conductors in the two half cells. The cell potential. That's what we measure using this voltmeter, so that's the difference in potentials between the two 
half cells. The half cells are the individual uh, read, reduction and oxidation, or the, or the systems that involve the reduction and oxidation processes. You can see kind of we're separating them in this electrochemical cell. We're allowing electrons to go from the reduction to the oxidation through a wire. Okay, here is our external circuit, all right? That is the external circuit which conducts electrons. So electrons can get from the reduction to the oxidation process. So there is a connection between them, but they're physically separated into two half cells, okay? And this overall construction is called our electrochemical cell, okay? So that covers the key terms. Remember, it's not really important to define them, but it is important to be able to refer to these things and to, to be able to decide which way electrons are flowing and where reduction is happening and so on and so forth. And we're going to look at how you do that in this one here, okay? Now, using reduction potentials to make predictions about our cell, well, there's lots of different things we can do. We can discuss um, what direction the electrons are going to flow in our external circuit. We can talk about what direction the ions are going to flow in the salt bridge. We can talk about which electrode is going to be positive and which one's going to be negative. We can say which one's going to be the anode and which one's going to be the cathode and where reduction and oxidation are taking place. Okay, let's look at the reduction potentials for these two equilibria. We've got copper in a solution of copper ions and magnesium in a solution of magnesium ions. So we're using these two standard reduction potentials. We can see that this one is more negative than that one. So this equilibrium lies further over to the electron side than that one does. Okay. So in other words, this these magnesium ions will turn into magnesium, these magnesium atoms will turn into magnesium ions, whilst the copper ions will turn into copper atoms. And that's just using the clockwise rule, right? Because I've written them the way they are on the data sheet with a more positive one on top. What's going on here? The copper is being reduced. It's gaining electrons. Okay? So that means that the reduction is happening in this system, whereas oxidation is happening there. Okay? So in other words, I know that this is my cathode. Okay? And this must be my anode. So far, so good. Now, if the magnesium electrode has more electrons on it, because it's better at giving up electrons, there'll be more electrons here than there are here. And that means that this electrode will be negative, right? Indeed, it is more negative than the other. Electrons will always flow from where there's lots of them to where there's not very many. Okay, so the flow of electrons in the external circuit is from the magnesium to the copper. Okay, because the copper is being reduced, it's getting the electrons from the magnesium. Let's say we had ammonium nitrate in our salt bridge. Then the nitrate ions here must be continuing that flow of negative charge. They must be flowing that way in our salt bridge. Let's say we had, well, we just said, We've got ammonium nitrate here, so the positive ions in the salt bridge must be flowing that way. Okay, so so far we've used just this information here to determine what is the anode, what's the cathode, what direction are the electrons flowing, and where is oxidation and where is reduction taking place. We can even say what we'd see at the two electrodes, right? Because this solution is going to start fading because the ions are turning into atoms and we're going to get a deposit of copper on that electrode whereas this electrode is going to start to dissolve this solution won't change color because these ions are colorless okay last thing that we could decide is the overall potential now you've seen this being done before it is the standard electrode potential for the reduction process minus the standard electrode potential for the oxidation process. Okay? In other words, it's the difference between these two numbers. Okay? It's the reduction process, 0.34, minus, minus 2.36, and that equals 2.70 volts. So the overall cell potential for this electrochemical cell is 2.7 volts. So in other words, if I placed 
an elect a magnesium electrode in a solution of one mole per liter magnesium ions, a copper electrode in a one mole per liter solution of copper ions at 25 degrees centigrade, because remember these are given at 25 degrees centigrade, put a salt bridge between them, then I ought to measure a 2.7 volt potential difference on my voltmeter. And that's about it for the principles of electrochemical cells. Um, there's a huge number of different possibilities for electrochemical cells, um, but hopefully by using the principles that you've covered in this film, you'll be able to predict all these different things that we've done here for a large range of different electrochemical cells. The next film that um, actually covers some commercial examples of cells that are made of different half cells um, so hopefully, if you understand what went on in this film, you'll have a better chance of understanding what's going on in the next one. So please comment, please ask questions, and please try not to move on before you've understand, understood things fully.